and you come in and you put down your clothes and you go to the bathroom and what do you see? Pardon? Soap, yeah. What else do you see? Mm -mm. Sink, toilet. Sink, toilet. Yeah, these are all memes. They're all memes, but they're sort of useful ones. And then there's this one. <laughs> what is this one doing? This has spread all over the world. It's not surprising that you all found it when you arrived in your bathrooms here, but I took this photograph in a toilet at the back of a tent in the eco camp in the jungle in Assam. <laughs> Who folded that thing up there and why? <laughs> Some people get carried away. <laughs> Other people are just lazy and make mistakes. Some hotels exploit the opportunity to put even more memes with a little sticker. What is this all about? I suppose it's there to tell you that somebody's clean, cleaned the place and it's all lovely and, you know, actually all it tells you is that another person has potentially spread, spread germs from place to place. So think of it this way. Imagine a world full of brains and far more memes than can possibly find homes. The memes are all trying to get copied. Trying, in inverted commas, i.e., the shorthand is, that's the shorthand for, if they can get copied, they will. They're using you and me as they're propagating a copying machinery. And we are the meme machines. Now, why is this important? Why is this useful, or what does it tell us? It gives us a completely new view of human origins and what it means to be human. All conventional theories of cultural evolution, of, of the origin of humans and what makes us so different from other species. All other theories explaining the big brain and language and tool use and all these things that make us unique are based upon genes. Language must have been useful for the genes. Tool use must have enhanced our survival, mating and so on. It always comes back, as Richard Dawkins complained all that long time ago, it always comes back to genes. The point of memetics is to say, oh, no, it doesn't. There are two replicators now on this planet. From the moment that our ancestors, perhaps two and a half million years ago or so, began imitating, there was a new copying process. Copying with variation and selection. A new replicator was let loose. And it could never be, right from the start, it could never be that human beings who let loose this, this new creature could just copy the useful, beautiful, true things and not copy the other things. While their brains were um, having an advantage from being able to copy lighting fires, keeping fires going, new techniques of hunting, these kinds of things, inevitably they were also copying putting feathers in their hair or wearing strange clothes or painting their faces or whatever. So you get an arms race between the genes which are trying to get the humans to have small economical brains and uh, not waste their time copying all this stuff. And the memes themselves, like the sounds that people made and copied, in other words, what turned out to be language, competing to get the brains to get bigger and bigger. So the big brain on this theory is, is, is driven by the memes. This is why in, in the meme machine um, I called it memetic drive. As the memes evolve, as they inevitably must, they drive a bigger brain that is better at copying the memes that, um, that are doing the driving. This is why we've ended up with such peculiar brains, that we like religion and music and art. Language is a parasite that we've adapted to, not something that was there originally for, for our genes on this view. And like most parasites, it be can begin dangerous, but then it co-evolves and adapts, and we end up with a symbiotic relationship with this new parasite. And so from our perspective, we don't realize that that's how it began. So this is a view of what humans are. All other species on this planet are gene machines only. They don't imitate at all well, hardly at all. We alone are gene machines and meme machines as well. The memes took a gene machine and turned it into a meme machine. But that's not all. We have new kind of memes now. I've been wondering for a long time, since I've been thinking about memes a lot, is there a difference between the memes that we copy, the words we speak to each other, the gestures we copy, the human things, and all these technological things around us? I have always, until now, called them all memes. But I think, I, I, I do honestly think now we need a new word for technological memes. Let's call them techno-memes or teams. Because the processes are getting different. 
we began perhaps 5,000 years ago with writing. We put the, the, uh, the storage of memes out there on a, on a clay tablet. But in order to get true teams and true team machines, you need to get the variation, the selection, and the copying all done outside of humans. And we're getting there. We're at this extraordinary point where we're nearly there, that there are machines like that. And indeed, in this short time I've already been at TED, I see we're even closer than I thought we were before. So actually, now, the teams are, trans are, are, are forcing our brains to become more like team machines. Our children are growing up very quickly learning to read, learning to use machinery. We're going to have all kinds of implants, drugs that force us to stay awake all the time. We'll, we'll, we'll think we're choosing these things, but the teams are making us do it. So we're at this cusp now of having a third replicator on our planet. Now, what about what else is going on out there in the universe? Is there anyone else out there? People have been asking this question for a long time. We've been asking it here at TED already. In 1961, Frank Drake made his famous equation. But I think he concentrated on the wrong things. It's been very productive, that equation. He wanted to estimate n, the number of communicative civilizations out there in our galaxy. And he included in there the rate of uh, star formation, the rate of planets, but crucially, intelligence. I think that's the wrong way to think about it. Intelligence appears all over the place in all kinds of guises. Human intelligence is only one kind of a thing. But what's really important is the replicators you have and the levels of replicators, one feeding on the one before. So I would suggest that we don't think intelligence, we think replicators. And on that basis, I've suggested a different kind of equation, a very simple equation. N, the same thing, the number of uh, communicative civilizations out there we might expect in our galaxy. Just start with the, the number of planets there are in our galaxy, the fraction of those which get a first replicator, the fraction of those that get the second replicator, the fraction of those that get the third replicator, because it's only the third replicator that's going to reach out, sending information, sending probes, getting out there and communicating with anywhere else. Okay, so if we take that equation, why haven't we heard from anybody out there? 